Welcome back to DXB Today. So excited about our next guest that's joining us in the studio. It is Zainab Al Salah, founder of Carousel Events. First of all, Zainab, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm well, so happy to be here with all of you. We are really happy to have you because we're going to really delve deep into such a big event industry in Dubai, weddings. Tell us more about how you first of all created Carousel and got into it. Well, that's a long story. It will probably <laughs> take a long time, but it was, you know, I got into this industry accidentally. I'm actually a banker. So I started my career in banking um, and it was, uh, you know, only my husband realized my, my talent and my, you know, passion for events and weddings in particular. And uh, he kind of like guided me to do what I love because I wasn't happy um, Amazing. being, uh, you know, a banker. So it's, it was a passion that uh, it took someone else to recognize in me, <laughs> not well, me. Zainab, I know that uh, not everyone gets a wedding planner. A lot of people think they can plan the wedding themselves and a lot of people do. What is the benefit of getting someone to plan that for you, someone who has your services? Well, countless benefits. And I think, you know, when I first started uh, nearly 16 years ago, it was not customary for people in this part of the world to hire a planner. Traditionally, weddings were planned by family members. Um, it's a family affair. Um, and, uh, you know, right before we started, we were talking about it being a committee. It still is a committee with certain cultures. Um, but nowadays, hiring a planner is almost um, something that anyone does with any kind of wedding size or budget. It's not a luxury. It's considered a necessity. A uh, wedding planner will save you time, will save you money, uh, will save you stress and hassle. Um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I don't think anyone will embark on a wedding, no matter how, how big or small, without hiring a planner today. Amazing. Yes. I'll give you a, a true story of why you need a planner. My husband and I, we organized our own wedding. And after that, we couldn't even enjoy our honeymoon because we were just too tired. Oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it's not fair. You know, you need to be there and be present uh, for, th for that day. Even your family and friends, they need to be there with you to enjoy the moment. They need not be running around getting things done for you. That's our job. Um, you know, people sometimes don't understand the amount of work and time and effort that goes into planning oh, a wedding. It's ridiculous. It's tough. <laughs> it is. Talk about in this region, though. You must have done some huge weddings. Tell us about some of those and some of the details that, that were involved so you know we do weddings of all sizes of course you know we don't hold ourselves to that that we just do large weddings we've done weddings of 2,000 people and we do weddings for 30 to 40 people of course post covid smaller micro weddings uh, were very popular um, but we've we've done it all um, being a wedding planner in dubai gets us to uh, work with people from all over the world we were talking about how multinational dubai is um, and it's really exciting to be able to work with people from different cultures different walks of life uh, trying to infuse these cultures together as well is pretty exciting. Uh, doing weddings in a city like Dubai where we're constantly pushing the limit. Um, of course, Dubai sets uh, uh, an example for us all uh, to be able to deliver that much and more. So we're always uh, trying to uh, exceed uh, our expectations and our clients' expectations mm. as well. Now, you talk about the different cultures that you work with, and off the top of my head, I'm thinking Arabic weddings, very big. I'm thinking Indian weddings, very long. I'm thinking Western weddings, very precise. Which ones are the most challenging ones to actually plan? Um, I think every wedding is challenging, no matter how small mm. or, or how um, uh, you know intimate it is. It's still a challenge. It's someone's wedding day. There's just so much at stake. Um, yeah, I don't take it lightly just because someone is planning a small wedding versus a bigger wedding. They're just as stressful for us. Sometimes the smaller ones are actually a lot more hectic uh, because you know with a smaller wedding, there's a lot more detail that you have to uh, consider and, and, and look at. Um, but I think you know w w weddings in general, you know we're considered um, uh, wedding planners are up there with firefighters and, and pilots and very military personnel. Very, very stressful job. job. So we're rated up there, top five most stressful job in the world. Let's talk about stress. <laughs> How do you choose a venue? How do I choose? Very good. Great sales. Coca Cola. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we haven't done a wedding yet. We haven't done a wedding yet. You know, I always get asked about how I choose a venue. Of course, there's a lot of considerations when you're considering what venue to recommend to your client. Uh, but most of the time, it's the relationship I have with that venue. It's it's what really drives me towards recommending a venue relationships with my suppliers and my partners uh, when we're working on a wedding is very important. Um, so even though a wedding may tick all the boxes in terms of capacity and size and location and um, uh, let's say uh, considerations aesthetic or not, it's really the people at the venue that help me deliver is what matters to me most when I'm picking a venue. Yeah. 
thank you so much. We could go on and on about this, can we? And so could you. I could yes. really feel your passion for your job. Thank you so much for I joining us. I just want to watch Mark try and sell the Coca Cola well, right now. <laughs> We've had a good 45 minutes we earlier. Did, yes. We did, actually, we did. He doesn't have to do a lot of selling. So maybe maybe we will work on our there first we wedding there together soon. We are going to be Mac looking Lamont forward do to the that. Service. <laughs> yeah, why not? So <laughs> Zim, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, Dubai World Trade Center recently announced it hosted 244 exhibitions and events in 2022, growing by 39% over the previous year. 1.98 million delegates were hosted over the year. So, Ash went down for a behind the scenes tour of the World Trade Center and kitchens, of course. She also checked out the kitchens to find out just exactly how they cater to these big numbers. Let's take a look. The Dubai World Trade Center was founded in the 1970s and is definitely one of the most premier event spaces here in the UAE. It has more than 3 million annual visitors and over 80,000 exhibitors from across 185 countries. But there's more than what meets the eye here at the convention center. Today, we are going to find out a little bit more about what goes behind the culinary scene here. So I'm here with the man himself, Chef George. I'm so excited to be here with you and try your special menu a little bit later on. But before that, I have to ask you, you've been in Dubai for just under a year. How has yes. it been here at the Dubai World it's, Trade Center? It's an amazing city. It's just, uh, when I arrived here first time, it was like, wow, it's just uh, the impressions of, of the entire city has so much involved, evolved from the past or the last uh, 30 years ago when I saw it the first time. So it's amazing just to be here. Now, Chef, I was raised in Dubai, so I've been here for 30 some years. It's funny because I'm only 25. Uh, and I have done so many events here at the World Trade Center. I've had so many different meals and never really understood what goes behind the making of this. And I understand that nearly 150 chefs report to you. What's the operation like? It's we are quite a, quite a diverse operation because we not just do exhibitions and conventions. We do also weddings, in-house weddings. Formula One, Dubai Air Show. So we are just not just based in the World Trade Center. So we do also within the UE, all the way from Abu Dhabi to Fujairah down to LA, and we're just almost everywhere. Just cater for whoever wants our great food. Now in a place like Dubai, which is such a cultural melting pot, there are so many different types of palates to please. How do you manage to sort of bring it all together and have a little something for everyone at the table? So I am... Um, putting myself together with a lot of diverse chefs so that I can cater for all the newest uh, trends coming out there, uh, getting with some more female stuff and, and key positions into the kitchen just to bring that they can bring their flair into the, their touch than just try to having uh, male chefs in the kitchen. And you are no stranger to cooking for celebrities, Tina Turner, Elton John, Bill Clinton, now Ishwarya Ajit. You know, we are so excited and humbled to have you here with us. Throughout my career, traveling around, you get in contact with a lot of uh, famous uh, people and, and it's just great uh, having worked for them and, and experienced at that company and just, you know, made their food for them. Okay, which way is the dining table? Please guide me. <laughs> I need to read. <laughs> just had the most exquisite five course meal here at the Dubai World Trade Center. This is the same menu which won them an award at the Salon Culinaire 2023 awards. Lucky me, I got to sample some delicious dishes. I really didn't think I'd be saying this on the show today, but did you see the size of that pot? No. <laughs> <laughs> Massive pot. But I think it's time for the daily roundup. Katie, what have you got for us? Oh, today's is so interesting. So according to the Dubai Media Office, Dubai registered a strong year-on-year -year growth of 44% in business events in the first half of 2023 alone. Dubai Business Events, DBE, they worked with partners to win 143 conferences, congresses, meetings, incentives, and they're expected to bring over 94,000 additional visitors to the city. Mark, there are some big numbers I'm just throwing around there. 
I mean, tell me, how does that even compute? Well, to, to be honest, um, you've got to look at geographically where Dubai is positioned. Yeah, you've true. got incredible venues. Uh, so obviously the World Trade Center, facilities like ours, Dubai Opera, uh, hotel ballrooms. And so just look at the roads. You can tell when there is a big conference mm -hmm. or exhibition mm -hmm. on Sheikh Zayed Road because it's pretty much at a gridlock between those, those peak hours. The metros, people are using those hotels. Um, you can feel the energy of a city lift completely, whether you're in Jebel Ali or in Dera, the whole energy lifts when a big exhibition comes through. And the reality is in Dubai, we just kind of live, of course we live forward, but you sort of week to week, you're like, oh, Jitex is coming this week. Oh, has it been a year since it was there? The other day. So, you know, it's, it's incredible to see. The stakeholders are, are doing a phenomenal job. We've all traveled. You see Dubai being advertised everywhere. You see international events. Um, being advertised in airports when you land in Bangkok, for example, yeah, or yeah. in Chennai, or, or, and what have you. And it's not just real estate. Um, so it, it's incredible to see. I mean, it will just keep getting, I, I keep, keep saying this bigger and better thing, but Dubai has always been a hub for these big events. So to then get these numbers that are even bigger, is it ever surprising to you? Do you ever think it's going to stop? But you, you look at the analytics and then Dubai is a forward thinking city. Mm. So it's okay, we had phenomenal numbers last year. How do we do more? I mean, what it just can keeps we do getting more? better yeah. though. I mean, yeah. we've got COP28 coming, that is huge. Exactly. I'm, I'm fingers crossed for future World Cups and Olympics and stuff, I think. 100% here. After Expo, we've just basically told the world that we can do it here. Amazingly. If anything, it's bigger and better. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Well, we've got lots more to talk about on the show today, but let's take a quick look about what's coming up after the break. We are going to be catching up with the regional director of Tough Mudder right here in the Middle East. Duncan Dews is in the studio. And of course, our interview with Julian Lescott, Manchester City treble trophy. Do we think we can win it? And a whole lot more, definitely. So don't go anywhere.